Hi guys, welcome back to our channel Right Turn to Canada. I hope all you guys are doing great. First of all, I would like to thank all the viewers who watched and liked our previous videos and subscribed to our channel. Uh, we are really happy to connect with all you people and to create a YouTube family of our own. If you watched our last video, it was all about our traveling experience from India to Canada that we recently had in December 2018. I intentionally did not include my uh, experience of traveling with the kid in that video because I really felt that uh, it, that topic needed a dedicated video to itself. So here I am today with all my traveling experience of traveling with a kid. You turned toward me and looked so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes And everything we said we'd be We just traded for a suit coat and a tie You turn toward me so guys, most of us find the idea of taking long flights boring and exhausting and all the parents like us who want to travel with the kids find it even more difficult to do so because they have so many questions on their mind uh, for, uh, like uh, how is the kid going to behave, how am I going to feed the kid on the plane and uh, what if uh, he cries and how am I going to keep, keep him entertained for uh, such long hours but guys trust me when I tell you that it is not as difficult everything is not going to go wrong on that very flight with you your child is going to be definitely okay if you do a little bit of planning and you pack uh, mindfully and everything is going to be fine and you're going to have an enjoyable journey and I'm very sure you do not want to miss on that 10, uh, 10 days long vacation on a beach just because you're afraid to take a 10 hour long flight so let us begin with the video and see how we can plan and pack right uh, to make our air travels enjoyable with the kids. Uh, when we traveled here in December, Asmara was 22 months old and uh, she had never taken uh, such a long flight of 15 hours. She had been on a few flights of 5 to 6 hours but this was her first uh, long travel. As I shared with you guys in our previous video that we took an Air Canada flight from New Delhi to Toronto and so I am speaking from my experience with Air Canada but I believe that the provisions and the allowances for the kids are almost similar in all the airlines but you can definitely check from your airlines after you book your tickets. Uh, I will begin first with the planning and the bookings that you need to do while you book your flights. The first thing in that is booking a seat for your child. Now if you're traveling with a kid who is younger than 2 years old, you can carry him or, her, him or her on your lap. That is you do not need to book a separate seat for a kid who is younger than 2 years. However, I believe you can book a separate seat for your infant below 2 years. You will have to pay a full ticket for your infant and you will also have to check with the different specifications of your airline because uh, uh, most of the airlines have uh, uh, specific requirements for you uh, to if you want to make your child sit on a separate seat for example Air Canada requires you to have a special restraining seat for your infant if you want him to sit on a separate seat for kids who are older than two years old you will have to book a full ticket and you will get a full seat a few other things that you can consider while booking your tickets is that you can request for a bassinet for your child if he or she weighs less than 12 kgs and he or she cannot sit upright. Now I would specially mention this point because uh, as I mentioned in my previous video that I requested for a bassinet and I was hoping to get a bassinet for my daughter in the flight because she weighed less than 12 kgs but she could uh, sit and walk so she did not get a bassinet for so for for all you people who do not travel very frequently uh, in air um, in airlines i guess this is a point to take take note of that if your child can sit upright and can walk he or she will not get a bassinet even if he or she weighs less than 12 kgs another thing that you can consider here is uh, that some of the airlines allow you to book a special meal for your kids that is a kids meal uh, now depending on the airlines uh, you can have the choice or not 
another thing i would recommend for you guys to do is to check the specifications for the stroller that you can take on the flight as i shared with you guys in my previous video that in addition to the carry on baggage you can carry a diaper bag and a stroller for your kid you need to drop that stroller with the flight staff right before you board the flight and you get that stroller uh, right after you come out of the flight now that we are through all the planning in the booking let's have a look at uh, what to pack and how to pack when you're traveling with a kid especially a toddler the two major concerns that all the or most of the parents have is uh, one uh, keeping the child entertained for such long hours of the flight and second to keep the child well fed during the flight i'll try to address all these concerns one by one in my video ahead so let us first begin with the, keeping the children entertained now the first thing that is very important to consider here is the timings of your flight i am someone who prefers nighttime flights uh, for my longer travels as compared to the daytime flights because in that uh, uh, way my child can sleep through most part of the journey uh, for the time she is awake i can keep her entertained with a few things and things can go good but some of you might have different preferences some of you might feel that they find it easier to keep their children entertained uh, during the day hours and it is difficult for them to make the children sleep uh, so i would suggest you to book your flights according to the timings in which you find it easiest to handle your child if you're taking a flight at the night time i would suggest that you try to engage your child in some kind of a physically exhausting and entertaining activity right before the flight uh, you can do it after you are through your check-in process you can try to play with the child make him run uh, or play uh, some kind of activity that uh, exhausts the child and also is entertaining for him it will be easier for you because the child will sleep instantly when he enters the flight because it is also uh, the time also coincides with his normal uh, nighttime sleep and is he is physically tired if you're taking a daytime flight or for the hours uh, during which your child is awake you should carry and pack a few things to keep your child busy you can make a package in which you can include some of his or her favorite toys uh, try to include a, a smaller size but a number of toys because the children do try and tend to get bored and they do not usually want to play with the same toy for a longer period of time so try to include small or little things that you can play around with during the flight you can also pack a few colors and small sketchbooks that you get on the market in that package you can definitely keep them busy in coloring and drawing for some part of the time a few other things that keep the children busy is you can carry the smaller pack of blocks or legos that the children can enjoy you can also pack uh, some kinds of puzzles if your child enjoys solving them another thing that you can do here is that you can keep an ipad or a phone that is fully charged and that is fully loaded with uh, a few rhymes and few of the favorite movies or uh, cartoon uh, films uh, of your child now many of the parents would say that uh, it is not good for the children to watch the screen for a long amount a long period of time and they do not want the child to do that but guys i want to mention here that it is just the matter of those 10 to 15 hours and trust me when you're in a flight those 15 hours are going to be really really long and your child is going to be bored no matter how many toys you take so you need something that can distract your child for a while you may or may not give screen or ipad to your child before or after that journey if you do not want to carry an ipad or a phone separately for your kid the most of the flights also have an in-flight entertainment system and they do have some kind of movies for or tv series for the kids another thing here is that we booked the seat with the bassinet although we didn't get one uh, but it did give uh, us a seat with the uh, a good good leg room uh, where smara could stand and play for a little while you do not get uh, that kind of space on other seats in the flight so if someone has not booked a, a seat with the bassinet you can definitely check for if if, the, if those seats are available for you even if you do not need a bassinet because it will give you some leg space and some space for the child to play 
Another thing is that do not hesitate to take your child for a stroll when he or she really wants to leave the seat because there is no way uh, you can make your child sit for long 15 hours on your lap or on a, dip, on, on a different seat even. So you will have to take the child on a stroll. Do not worry that he's going to disturb other, um, other passenger, uh, passengers on the flight. I'm sure they would understand that it is difficult for a kid in a 15 hour long flight. For the older children, you can also carry different kinds of books they enjoy. They can read them on the flight or you can read stories to them. So it can really help you. Now that we've seen how can we keep them entertained, let us have a look how we can fill up their tummies while they're on a long flight. Now guys, no matter if you're traveling during the daytime or the nighttime, I would advise you to carry, always carry food for your children. Especially if you are traveling with a toddler or an infant who is not used to having food from outside or in-flight food. Even if you're traveling with uh, some grown-up kids that can have the in-flight food, I would suggest you carry a few of the snacks because that in-flight food might not be available out of the schedule. So for example, we were served a supper and a breakfast and nothing was served in between those hours. So if your child feels hungry within those hours, you would definitely need to have something to feed them. As I told you earlier in the video that you can book for special meals for your kids uh, in certain airlines. So it is good if you, uh, if you can get them. I booked for a kids meal uh, for my daughter but I did not get it because they said that they had not received my request. Uh, they, although they, uh, they did provide me with some of the packaged food, those uh, Heinz packed fruit purees for my daughter which were definitely not sufficient for a toddler. Uh, they might be okay for a uh, few of the younger kids who just uh, feed on uh, semi-solids but my daughter was on full solid food so it was definitely not sufficient for her. I always like to feed my daughter right before the flight so I always carry some of the food items like a pasta or uh, like Indian people would know a khichdi or dal and rice or something like that that can be heated and given to the child directly so I always carry uh, that kind of thing in a microwavable uh, bowl with a lid. I just take that microwavable bowl uh, at the airport to any of the kiosks or cafes or restaurants and they heat it and they give it to me and I feed it to my daughter right before the flight. So she is completely full. It can definitely help you to avoid air sickness especially at the time of the takeoff because many of the babies and toddlers feel like puking at the time of uh, uh, takeoff. Uh, so you can avoid that by feeding them well before the takeoff. For your time on the flight, I would advise you guys to carry some kind of food that is really filling for the times when your child is hungry. For example, I carried a homemade whole wheat cake that was made by my very dear friend. So you can carry something like that, uh, that you can feed your child when she's really hungry. You can uh, also carry a few things like uh, uh, a boiled boil pasta with not much of a sauce because a saucy pasta can go bad after a few hours. Uh, you can also carry uh, some kind of uh, 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 Indian flatbread or paranta and some dry uh, potatoes. Um, they can last for a longer time. Or you can carry some kind of a flavored bread that your child enjoys. Um, that can be a whole wheat bread or a bread of your choice. So do keep something that is filling that you can feed your child as a complete meal. Apart from that, do not forget to carry on some of the munchies that uh, they can feed on while they are playing. It helps them to keep them fed and it also helps them to keep them entertained for some point of the time. For example, I carried makhanas and uh, uh, some of the rice puffs and some of the small sized cookies or Oreos that you get in the market. So you can definitely keep a few snacks handy of that sort. A few other things that I always like to keep with me on flights is uh, a few of the things that I can give her as a treat that she does not get in normal routine. For example, a few mini chocolates or skittles or gems or a few things like that that she uh, enjoys but she does not get in normal routine. Uh, guys, the key here is not uh, taking care of the nutrition of your child. You just worried about keeping them well fed and keeping them entertained and happy during the flight and these treats can really help in those times when your child is really cranky or is uh, um, obeying some of your orders and is listening to you so you can just treat them with a toffee and they'll be happy and they will listen to you the next time. 
For the children who are still on milk or on semi-solid food, you can definitely carry some of the packaged uh, fruit purees. Uh, they are also available on the flight if you request them in advance, but you can always carry a few packs in your bag. Uh, you can also carry a powdered milk for uh, younger and older babies if your baby takes them in routine. Uh, you can carry powdered milk and you can carry boiled water. Uh, I have been allowed uh, carrying boiled water on many of the flights. You can check with your airlines. Even if you're not allowed or you, if you do not want to carry boiled water with you, you can definitely ca get boiled water on flight. So you can carry the powdered milk with you in a small uh, containers uh, and you can get boiled water on flight and uh, feed your child with milk. Another thing that I always prefer to carry is the market uh, packed cereal. For example, we have Cerelac or Farex in India. I always like to keep a packet of Cerelac that is fit for my daughter's age in my bag because it is it can come very handy in emergency situations. For example, if the food that you carry goes bad or if the child is not ready to eat that food and if your flight gets delayed, one packet of that cereal is good to feed your child for many meals. You can also feed your child with the in-flight food available uh, if, you're, if he or she is old enough because the food is generally non-spicy so you can try feeding it to your child if he's old enough. For example, at the breakfast time we got uh, uh, eggs and bread in the non-veg meal and uh, the Indian flatbread or parantha and uh, some potatoes uh, in the veg meal and my daughter really enjoyed the veg meal so I asked uh, the flight staff to give me a, a separate package uh, for the veg meal and I fed my daughter with her and she really enjoyed so that is also one option for the older kids so these are pretty much all the tips on feeding that I use uh, to feed Asmara on flights uh, let us now discuss a few other things that you should and you need to pack if you're traveling with kids I would advise you to carry one set of complete change of clothing uh, for your child although I would highly recommend two if you're traveling with an infant or a toddler uh, 14 to 15 hours is a long time for your children to spill something on their clothes or they might even get air sick so you definitely need a few clothes to change if you need them. If you're traveling with an infant or uh, with, uh, with a kid who's uh, uh, younger than one year, I would also advise you to carry a change of uh, clothing for yourself because uh, uh, younger kids uh, usually uh, have a higher tendency to get air sick and uh, they can also spill a lot of fruit purees or sauces over you. So you definitely need to uh, have, a, a, a have some clothes handy if you need them. Also, if you are uh, traveling to a country that is colder than your place, do not forget to pack some of the warm clothing for yourself and for your kid. For example, when we were traveling here in uh, December, the temperatures were already around minus 10 in Canada, while it was not that cold in India by then. So we packed an extra warm jacket for, our, our, for her and for uh, ourselves. We also packed um, uh, a cap, a warm cap. Of a mitten, a pair of mittens, a few socks, warm socks and a few um, sweaters and uh, body warmers for her. So these are pretty much all the tips from uh, my experience of traveling with Asmara on the flights. Uh, I know from my experience that you can uh, try as much as you can to plan things and do everything perfectly but there are still chances that your uh, child might get cranky for a while on the flight. So the key here is uh, to not get affected by that. I would uh, like to tell you guys that do not get embarrassed if you get a few stares from the fellow passengers. Uh, I know you will be trying your best to calm your child and to get the things in control and you will be able to do that so you do need not to worry about a few stares from here and there. So to sum up things, I can say that with a little amount of planning and careful packing, you can make your journeys and air travels hassle free and even enjoyable. I hope you will find this video useful in planning your next trip with your kids and you would uh, not avoid traveling with your kids anymore. I know many of you mothers will be having many more tips and recipes and stories to share with us on this topic. Please do share all those stories in the comment section, I would love to read them. Please do like and share this video if you find it useful and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. 
You can also connect with us uh, through our Facebook page, Right Turn to Canada. Do like that page to read all the posts of our family together and uh, also on Canada and immigration. Another news for you guys is that we've also created a Facebook group to make it easy for you guys to share your stories and opinions with us. Do click the link of the Facebook group in the description box and join the group and share all your stories with us. So friends, keep watching, keep liking. Until next time, bye-bye and take care.